So I'm sitting here with my old Shape Oco uh, that has served me very well for quite a while. It has done many good projects uh, and uh, I've been very fond of it. But it also has its drawback because uh, there's some flicks, as you can see here, on uh, the gantry part. So today is special because I just received the new x carb from Inventables and I look very much forward to uh, assembling that and see if uh, some of all the improvements that has been done to it uh, is uh, fixing some of this. It's been a lot more easy to assemble so it's going to be interesting. So hang in, I'll go and assemble and let's see how it works. So here it is, all very well organized in uh, individual boxes. The spindle, motion controller, core components, steppers, the rails, the power supply, all wiring, limit switch, clamps, drag chain, lead screw, and the threaded inserts, and then finally the the uh, the uh, main board. And then this is the content of the uh, motion controller box. So you have the uh, the uh, enclosure, the G shield, the Uno, and then various connectors, wires, a fan with a guard, some screws, and finally a USB cable. And then we have what's in the spindle box. Some some wrenches, uh, cap screws, and then the uh, spindle itself with the collet, and then a very nice uh, holder here. It's an all all aluminum uh, piece. It's just one extrusion with some milling done on it. It's a, it's a really really nice piece. This one. And obvious in the NEMA uh, 23 box, we have the four NEMA 23s, surprise, and then we have uh, the pulleys and uh, various screws and so on and so forth. So and here's what we have in the power supply box. There's the uh, power supply itself, which is currently on 115 volts, and the uh, the plug that comes with it is a US style so I definitely need to change that in order to run 220 and then there's this uh, nice back end here uh, where the uh, little board here will uh, fit very well so you get the, the power out here uh, in a good way and then we come to the last box with the core components uh, and you have the extrusion for the uh, Z-axis and it's nicely uh, anodized on both ends. You have a bag full of screws and wee wheels and all these goodies. Uh, the main plates and uh, with the hole for the motor, the brackets and this is the new top for the Z-axis uh, with the bearing and the wheel and the little belt here. And then I guess the, the big new thing is this extrusion here um, for for the um, X axis. And again, I must admit this is a really a nice piece, very well fabricated, um, and I'm sure it's gonna improve the uh, stability um, or the stiffness of the machine quite a bit because I guess this is one of the weaker weaker spots on the uh, original design with all the with the long screws and uh, the, uh, the the long spacers gave pretty uh, good uh, options for uh, for uh, for flex so uh, I look very much forward to assemble that one okay ready to assemble the uh, X assembly have all the parts ready and basically just follow the instruction. So that took uh, 40 minutes including finding all the parts in the different bags. Yeah so next step is the Y uh, assembly with the two plates and 
uh, and wheels and so on. Yeah, so that was another 40 minutes to get these uh, two plates in. Yeah, so now I have uh, mounted the uh, main rails, so now it looks like a machine. Uh, and I think it's worthwhile pointing out, which is in the instruction, but not uh, something that I noticed, that it's important to secure that this uh, slot here is facing up because otherwise you can't get the uh, screw in place that will actually become the uh, limit switch engaging thing. So that's an important, so I basically had to go and take it apart. A second thing I experienced was uh, mounting the, uh, the Acme rock. Uh, it's eight millimeter inside both the pulley and the bearing and the acme rod didn't fit 100% so I had to put it in the drill press and work a little with uh, to get it uh, down. It was less than one tenth of a millimeter but enough so that you couldn't get it on. They just use a file and then some sandpaper on the drill press so it worked out fine. So with the drag chains and all the wires in place, I'm essentially ready to do the last part, which is putting on the um, the spindle mount. You can see here, I have used some flexible tubing and some heat shrink to organize some of the wires, like here the the uh, limit switch. It's not necessary, but it just looks better. And some cable clamps, cable strips here to organize these. Yeah, so here we are. The uh, X car is all ready now for first testing. And I guess it looks quite nice. Uh, the machine itself, uh, the uh, control unit is a little messy with all these wires and I think it would be worthwhile to connect uh, the rest of the wires via some connectors because right now you can remove many of the wires but not all uh, uh, especially the stepper wires so you cannot really detach the control box from the machine so whenever you have to move it around you basically have to bring all of it but apart from that, I think I'm ready to try to crank up the whole thing and see uh, how it works initially. So I'm ready to do my first cut. Uh, it's not going to be a regular uh, cut. It's just a surface cut uh, with a V-bit on. I have mounted a uh, 90 degree V-bit uh, and I have some uh, thin MDF board. Uh, it's fixed with some clamps. I have 3D printed um, and, and the uh, pattern I have made is kind of a calibration pattern so it's a, a combination of lines and circles uh, that just uh, scratches the surface so I can measure whether I have a good uh, uh, calibration of the machine. So first I will be uh, ref home all uh, so homing the machine And so it goes up and touches the Z. And then it goes after the two other um, the two other uh, switches. So and then if you look, then it uh, the machine coordinates have now been adjusted. So after having homed the machine, I will now just uh, find the surface of the uh, material and it's a 4 mm stainless plate again so uh, I will tell the machine that now it's at 4 mm as soon as it hits here we go yeah, so now I position the uh, 
the spindle approximate the middle of the workpiece and if I move over here on the computer you can see um, this is the uh, visualizer that the spindle uh, will start in the middle and uh, maybe you can also see here that I have made the work positions uh, X and Y that's zero and then it is four millimeter up uh, from from the surface so uh, let's get started <laughs> Okay, let's have a look. I just hand sanded the uh, pattern, but I think it's it looks nice. So next step is of course then to measure uh, if the dimensions are correct. So now it's time to check the size here. Um, and it is very close to what it should be. The 20 centimeters this side. And uh, it's a little less than it should be on the other side. So I think we need to do a little calibration. I'll show that in a in a separate video.